Hey everyone! I'm really excited to be bringing you this new video. Um, I've recently updated my one of my very first bra patterns, which is the Bambi bra. And the thing that is so wonderful about this bra pattern is that you can sew it out of a combination of woven and some stretch fabrics. So the reason I love that so much is it means that you can use pretty silk fabric, um, lightweight linens, seersucker, flannel, um, pretty much any kind of fabric that you can imagine. Um, but also you can make this uh, bra completely out of stretch fabrics as well. So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to sew the variation of the Bambi bra that includes a center front cutout um, and a lace overlay upper cup. So I've already cut out all of my pieces. I've got my upper cup cut out of lace and I've just placed the lower edge of my pattern piece along the scalloped edge. Got my lower and lower side and lower center front. My band and I've also cut the front cut pieces out of a sheer stretch mesh which is what I'm using to line the bra. So the assembly of this bra really um, is going to involve a lot of the same techniques that you will have learned if you've already sewn the Jasmine or the Romy bra um, but it's a little different because it is sewn in partially woven fabrics. I'm going to start by assembling the lower cup so to begin with I just place my center front lower cup over, sorry I've got this all twisted around, <laughs> over top of my lining. And from here you may wish to baste by hand just around the perimeter just to keep everything in place and stop it from uh, slipping. So here's my center front piece with the lining basted onto the back. So from here we're going to assemble the lower cup using the encased seam method like you do on most of my bra patterns. So taking the side cup, we just place it along that slightly curved seam edge, flip it over, and take the lining against the lining side. And now we've got that center front piece sandwiched between the two layers. I've pinned my cup down that um, front seam. And if you're using a really slippery fabric like I am, you're really going to want to pin it carefully. And from here, I'm just using a half an inch seam allowance. And I'm stitching this seam together. And now when I open it up, I've got a nice regular seam on the outside and on the inside, my seam allowance is encased between the lining and the exterior. So from here, you could uh, just clip back your seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch or you could serge your raw edge. I like to serge it, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then I'm going to do some decorative top stitching just to secure that seam in place. So here's my assembled lower cup. I've top stitched about a quarter inch away from my seam. And I've also just basted along the entire perimeter of my cup just to keep the uh, mesh lining and my really flimsy silk from sliding. So now that that is assembled, we can finish this um, angled edge of our cutout. And to do that, I'm just going to use some fold over elastic. So if you've applied fold over elastic before, this is going to be um, nothing new to you. So working from the wrong side along that straight cutout edge, place your fold over elastic onto the mesh side. And the fold line of your elastic should run approximately alongside the cut edge of the cutout. So using a zigzag stitch, do a little back tack to anchor it on. Just put the slightest amount of tension on the elastic. This is um, just meant to stabilize this edge so that when you're wearing it, it doesn't stretch out. So cut back your elastic trim back 
any excess fabric as close as you can to your stitching line. And then fold the elastic along the line, the fold line, and top stitch in place. Again, using a zigzag stitch. In this variation, I want this scalloped edge of my lace to be a feature. So it gets pinned directly onto your bra. Um, and you're going to set the scalloped lace so that the scallops hit approximately one inch down from the upper edge of your lower cup. And you're going to want to use quite a few pins in here. So I just do a pin at the center front and a pin at the side. And then I work my way in, so kind of stretch it out. You need to kind of ease these pieces together. This is where a lot of the shaping comes from, especially for the larger cup size variation of this pattern. Um, it comes from this horizontal seam. This is definitely a more difficult variation to sew um, than view A. So I've got that roughly pinned on, and now I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to anchor that in place. So to top stitch this lace on, I'm using a fairly tight zigzag stitch, and I'm stitching the lace directly onto the fabric. I'm going to follow the edge of the scallops as best I can. Once you've zigzag stitched the lace on top of the lower cup, you may want to run a second row of stitching about a quarter of an inch um, above your first row just to secure it in place. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. And here I'm still following the, the edge of my scallops. Once you've done that, you can begin to trim back this excess fabric that extends beyond your stitching line. So the way I do that is I kind of um, angle my scissors so they're on about a 45 degree angle. That lets me get nice and close to the stitching line without actually snipping my stitches. When you're working with a lace, just be careful that you don't accidentally poke your scissors through the lace. Uh, it's really easy to cut holes in the lace that way. So that's the inside, and on the outside we have that nice, sca nice scalloped finish to our cup. Now that we've finished both cups um, and finished both edges of the cut out with fold over elastic, we can sew the center front seam. So simply put them right sides together and make sure you're lining up the edge of your lace and the edge of your fold over elastic finishing here. Um, you want it to butt up so you get a nice crisp a triangular cutout when you open it up. So I'm just gonna stitch these together using a half an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. There we go, that's what it looks like from the front. And on the inside you have a couple of different options of finishing the seam. I'm going to top stitch it down and uh, you could simply just fold over your 
raw edge, sorry, fold under your raw edge and then top stitch it down. You could serge it and then top stitch it down or you could zigzag stitch it and uh, top stitch it down if you want. The top stitching is completely optional. Um, because I'm using silk, I want it to have a nicer finish. So I'm gonna turn it under so it has a nice clean edge and I'm going to use my straight stitch again and I'm top stitching this in place. So there is the inside, it's a nice finish, and the outside has a nice crisp point to that cutout. From here, we're going to add the band, or the back band, down the side seam, which is very simple, and get on to our elastic finishing. So take your back band pieces and place them against the side seam, and we're going to stitch this together using a half inch seam allowance. And again, the right side of my band is facing the right side of my bralette front. And you can see here my side seam on my bralette ended up being a little bit longer than my um, band side seam. And I think that has happened just because I didn't have my lace placed exactly one inch down from the top so it's not a big deal I can just kind of blend that in when I apply my elastic so now, now that both of my side seams are sewn I'm going to finish the inside raw seam allowance with my serger if you're looking to add a little bit more stability to your bralette, this side seam is a really easy place to add just a short piece of plastic boning and it just helps keep the bra a little bit more upright. Um, if you would like to see a tutorial on how to add boning to your bralettes, let me know in the comments and I will prepare that for you. There is a tutorial on my blog, um, if you look through the tutorials page, on how to add boning to the jasmine bra to make it into a bikini top. Um, so the same technique would apply but I would be happy to do a video as well. So now that our bra is basically assembled I'm going to get on to the finishing stages which is applying the band elastic and the fold over elastic along the upper edge. So for finishing the band elastic on this variation with the cutout there's a lot of different ways you could finish this cutout. I'm just going to do it with plain band elastic so my band is going to just go continuous along the whole piece. So to apply the band elastic, place the band elastic with the fuzzy or the plush side facing up and the decorative edge facing up towards the top of your bra. Use a zigzag stitch. I use about a medium length and width stitch. And you're stitching so that when your needle heads towards the left, you're stitching just underneath this decorative edge. And as you stitch on the band elastic, pull on the elastic slightly. This is what creates a nice snug fit. When I get to the edge of my cutout, I'm going to do a back tack to secure that in place. And then I'm going to measure this out. So this is about two inches wide. I'm gonna move my needle over and move the bralette over. Back tack again, and then just continue along my way. So here it is starting to really take shape now. At this point, I'm going to trim back the excess fabric that extends beyond my stitching line. So at that cutout point, you could use an adjustable strap, you could use a piece of um, strap elastic that has a satin finish. There's so many different ways you can finish it for a different look. This just tends to be the easiest way. So switching my sewing machine to a multi-step zigzag stitch and I'm doing it as wide as my stitch will go. 
I fold the elastic underneath so that this decorative edge is just peeking out along the bottom of my bra and I'm top stitching it in place. Once again, when you get to this cutout edge, make sure to do a secure back tap. Lift your needle and your presser foot and then move the bralette over to start at the opposite or at the side, the other side. Back tack again and continue on your way. So I've completed my band elastic now and we're just going on to the finishing along the upper edge. And this uh, upper edge gets finished in two steps. I'm going to start by finishing the, neck, the front neckline edge with some fold over elastic. So I work from the inside of my garment first. And I'm going to start at one of these strap extensions. So place the elastic so the right side's facing up onto the wrong side of the bra. I do a little back tack to anchor it in place. And you're basically just gently stretching the elastic so that it eases around all of the curves of the neckline. When you get to this center front point, this center front seam, sink your needle down in. So it should sink down right into basically where that seam is. Lift your presser foot so your needle is down in your fabric. Turn your garment and begin to angle your fold over elastic so it follows along that curve. This is what's going to help you get a sharper uh, point to your neckline. And then continue along the way with the same tension applied to your fold over elastic. So there is my neckline. I'm going to trim back all of this excess fabric. And then folding the elastic along the fold line Use a zigzag stitch to top stitch in place. And just like we did before, sink your needle into that center front seam, lift the presser foot up and just kind of maneuver the bra around so you can continue along the way that helps you create keep that um, shape to the neckline so from here i'm going to do the exact same finish along this um, side and back upper edge so here's my bra now that i've finished the upper edges with fold over elastic and i've trimmed back my center back seam just a little bit shorter just because it fits me better when i do that so i always recommend that once you get to this point just kind of wrap the bra around you and make sure it fits nice and snug. If you have lots of excess fabric at this center back seam, um, just trim it back a little bit. It's a really simple alteration to make. So now I'm going to finish the closures, flipping it over. So I'm looking at the inside of the garment. I'm going to take the hook side of my closure and this is the style that I can just insert this end into. Um, some of them you need to fold over, um, but this is just the the kind that I use. So I've done that and I'm going to use a narrow straight stitch to stitch this in place. I'm going to do lots of back tacks at the beginning and end and I've also moved my needle position so my needle is sitting uh, closer to the right edge of my presser foot. Then on the opposite side, I'm going to flip the bra over so I'm looking at the right side of the bra. Um, and I'm going to take my eye side of my closure, so it's right side up, and I'm going to insert this opposite end into the little pocket. And the same as before, just a nice narrow or a tight um, straight stitch. You could do a zigzag stitch as well if you prefer. Just make sure whatever you do, do a secure back tack at the beginning and the end. 
So now we're at the point we are, where we can attach our straps and we can be a little creative at this point. You can either um, create a strap that attaches with a ring here. You can attach the strap directly to this strap extension. There's a few different ways you can do it. I think that I will do a ring. So I'm going to take a total of four rings and two sliders. two sliders. I need two pieces of strap elastic. All the measurements are provided in the pattern. And then two smaller pieces to attach the strap to the back. So I'm going to start by assembling my straps and if you're not sure how to do this I do have another video on how to assemble straps and there are also step-by-step -step instructions in the pattern. I've assembled my straps and on the loose end of the strap I've just sewn another one of my rings onto um, and I'm going to use this ring to insert these strap extensions. So just fold them under and then I like to use a really tight narrow zigzag stitch to create a bar tack effect. And then just top stitch that in place. So lots of back tacks. Again, this is an area of strain, so you really want it to be secure. So there's the front of our strap, and then turn the bra around, and we can pin our back strap extension onto the back. And there's lots of ways that you can attach this um, using different stitch types. So the way that I like to do it is to run a row of really tight zigzag stitches just along this lower band here. And then two rows of straight stitches, one along the lower edge of the fold over elastic and one along the upper edge of the fold over elastic. Do the exact same thing on the other side and that completes your bra. So this is a really cute vintage style bra. Um, I love that you can sew it out of a mix of woven and knit fabrics. I know I've got a lot of plans for how I want to sew some for myself. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye.